That might be easiest. Okay. So um, the first thing on the agenda is call to order. The second thing is roll call. So Thomas Azier. Here. Richard Lorenz. I'll need you to unmute, Richard. Richard Loren? Are you present? Hello. Hi, there you are. Is this Rick? Yes. Okay, thank you. Steve Corkin? Here. Okay. Um, three are present and we have a quorum. Next thing is election of the chairperson and vice chair. So um, anyone um, want to make a motion uh, for chairman? I'd move that Tom Azier be appointed, uh, be chairman. Thank you. Can I have a second? Do I have a second? Steve, I'm not sure you're muted. Second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Okay, so Thomas Azier is the chairman. And now we'll move on to vice chair. Can I have a mo motion for vice chair? I'll make a motion for uh, Rick as vice chair. And, uh, I, I do not want to be uh, vice chair. I'm, I'm getting older and I'm, I don't know how long I'm going to continue and, and uh, uh, I would ask that somebody else take the vo second uh, vice chair. Okay, then I would uh, uh, nominate Steve. Don't I'll second second? that. Okay. I'll second that. So we have Steve Corkin as the vice chair. Now we will move on to Consideration, um, well, I guess now the chair can take over, correct? Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the presentation of discussion of procedures governing the review process and new laws affecting the proceedings. Lindsay, is that your area? That is, thank you. So my name is Lindsay Mather. I'm an assistant city attorney for the city of Green Bay. Um, sorry, I'm having technical difficulties over here. Um, so I would, first of all, um, the board members, there are three of you. We need all three of you for a quorum. So if any of you need to step away, go to the bathroom, go get a drink, whatever, just let us know and we'll have to take a quick recess so that we don't lose quorum. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the, the normal stuff. Um, so the Board of Review is a quasi-judicial body. The Board of Review members sit as judges to hear evidence. My role today is to provide advice and legal counsel to the board and to ensure the board and the proper procedures are adhered to. Um, <clears throat> there is no stenographer, so I would ask that um, everyone that speaks, please do so clearly into a microphone and do not speak over one another um, because it'll be difficult uh, for us to discern who's speaking. <clears throat> um, the procedures for today, the um, board chair will call the hearing. The clerk will swear, swear in the witnesses who wish to testify. 
Um, the objector will get the chance to present their case and evidence through sworn uh, testimony. The assessor and the board will have the opportunity to ask the objector questions, and then the assessor will have the opportunity to present their evidence, um, and the objector and the board will have the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the objector will get a rebuttal if necessary. We'll deliberate and, and make a motion. There is a presumption that the assessor's value is correct and the objector, it, the burden is on the objector to overcome that presumption. Um, the board is bound to accept the assessor assessment as correct unless there is competent sworn testimony not contradicted by other evidence that proves the assessment to be incorrect. <clears throat> um, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> you guys will all have to forgive me. It's my first year doing this. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> um, I will remind um, the board to, uh, if it becomes um, appropriate to do so, please refer to the policies that the board voted to put in place last year for um, the waiver of the good, um, the 48 hour notice for good cause, the um, telephone and the um, waiver of the hearing to circuit court policy. Um, with respect to the telephonic test. A question right there. Sure thing. Um, is because of the way we're doing things this year, is the telephonic interviews waived or do we still have to, do they still need to file that form and do we need to approve it? So we would still, because just to make sure, because there hasn't been clear instruction uh, from the state as to whether uh, like Zoom testimony counts as in-person testimony, um, we would prefer that anyone giving testimony uh, telephonically or via Zoom um, complete the uh, request form and the reason can simply be uh, COVID-19. Where is the first weather update? And my, uh, my recommendation to the board is um, the, I believe the policy um, references um, just, um, nope, got too many papers on my desk, bear with me. I believe the policy stated that it was only for <clears throat> maybe I'm not, maybe I'm wrong. Um, so anyway, the um, one of the uh, criteria um, on the po in the policy is any other factors that the board uh, deems pertinent in deciding the request. Um, my advice would be that uh, COVID-19 and all related health advisories and those kinds of things would be among those other factors that you could consider um, and that those requests should be granted. <clears throat> Did that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. You bet. <clears throat> Let me just make sure I covered everything here. <clears throat> um, the entire Board of Review meeting is an open meeting. There will not be anything done in uh, closed session. And with that, I have nothing further. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda uh, is the city clerk's uh, verification and uh, statement. 
Thank you. We have met all the legal requirements under state statute to convene this board of review. I certify under Wisconsin State Statute 770.46 that Tom Azure, Richard Laurent, and Steve Corkin received the qualified training. The city has an ordinance for the confidentiality of income and expense information provided to the assessor under state law, which is section 70.47 sub 7 sub 8F. Open book session was held on May 27, 2020 on the city website and the assessor was available by phone. Level of assessment is at 90%. There are six object objections this year and they were emailed to you. For record keeping, I would ask that you not speak over each other and wait your turn. And thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is the discussion of the annual assessment report. Is that Russ? Is Russ there? Russ is muted. There we go. Are you there, Russ? Still can't hear you, Russ. Sorry about that, we're still waiting for Russ. It looks like he's trying to connect. Um, looks like he went off. Uh, maybe he's trying to come back on. Yeah, if he's, um, I don't know if he can hear me or not, but if he's on his computer, he can always use his phone to do the talking, but he, I think you have to be careful for echo echoing at that time. Um, well, it looks like maybe Lindsay went off to talk to him. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah, I did dial in. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why it worked before, but apparently now it's not. Okay, um, like Chris said, we're at 90% of market value for this year. Um, the market has been pretty good up until uh, COVID-19 hit and then uh, it dropped a little bit, but now we're seeing an, another pickup. So as of the first of the year, when our assessment rule was set, it was good. So there was no effect of COVID-19 on the 2020 assessment rule. So that's important to keep in mind when you're dealing with this year's assessment uh, appeals. Um, we noticed a, a big pickup in the residential uh, there's a lot of activity, mainly on the, uh, the far northeast side over by Red Smith School, and there's a lot of activity that has picked up new subdivision off of uh, Candle Way and Wood Lane. So 
uh, Green Bay is picking up a lot of it. I mean, uh, a lot of the new new uh, constructions happening that hasn't been in quite a few years. Uh, commercial wise, there are also uh, quite a bit of activity. As you notice, the uh, the Cub Food Store that was over off by the old Shopco on uh, West or East Mason Street that has been renewed and uh, taken off good. So they're still waiting on some redevelopment on the. Uh, old East Town Mall. Um, I had a couple of the outlaws sell. So that's still happening, slowly but surely, as with a lot of things. But it uh, seems to me that a lot of the properties that are waiting have had activity go on them. So it's a slow process, but uh, the uh, commercial properties haven't been negatively impacted as of yet. We may see that coming forward, but I think uh, Green Bay is a little bit more insulated than a lot of other communities with our, uh, whether it be the residential, with the apartments, so on. We haven't been overbuilt. Well, I think we're in a pretty good shape for not having the, uh, the large vacancies that some places I've seen, uh, whether it be out west or on the east coast. So we shouldn't see those big swings like they have there. So um, as far as the market going further, I think. Uh, I see uh, the lower rates being a good factor. So uh, a lot of the houses that are coming up on the market are selling within days, if not hours, of or getting a, an offer. So that's a good sign. So I don't I don't think that has changed a whole lot. Um, I know for a fact uh, my my son's looking for a place, and every call that he makes, the the property is either got multiple offers or had a, an offer within a few hours of picking it up. So that's good to know. I mean, uh, Green Bay is, is in, in good shape that way. I know we had a, a, a flood over on East Shore Drive. I know Tom, you're probably aware of that, um, but we had some impact on that. So hopefully they'll take care of that with some um, mitigation, but I've talked to a few of the owners on there. We'll take care of that going forward with uh, some of the damage that they had. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot of building going on. Uh, Green Bay is in, in good shape going forward, so uh, that's all I have. If you have questions, I'm willing to answer. Thank you, Russ. Uh, next is the uh, examination of the assessment role and performance of statutory duties. Is that you again, Russ? No, you guys will be doing the uh, the examination of the role. Yeah. Kind of hard. And that would be... <laughs> You would be doing that online. I think that's one thing that Lindsay said. So you can look up property, whether you want to do your own, or uh, I guess Lindsay has something to say. Hi, me again. So um, I thought that the easiest way um, would be for me to pull up the um, assessor screen that, or the um, assessment rule that is online that we directed um, people to in order to look up their own assessments. I'll share my screen so that you guys can all see it. And, and then if we'd normally go and look up a specific address and then double check that the numbers are correct, um, we'll do that, but you'll be able to see my screen, if that makes sense. So I think I have it pulled up here. So if someone wants to, someone on the board wants to throw out an address. I'll do it. Whoops, I didn't go in there, did it? Oh, no, you'll have to tell me and I'll have to put it in. Oh, 2651 Nicolay Drive. Oh, I know for sure this one's low. <laughs> Hey, I, I just got, you should see my shoreline. I got two bids to fix my shoreline, one for 59,000 and one for 55. Are you going to take care of that, Russ? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if we're, we're not even assessing riprap. <laughs> uh, that looks, that looks good. Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> Anyone else want to check a different address? Or are we good? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing.
Okay, the next on the agenda is the consideration with possible action and additional requests received by the city assessor as permitted by law. Uh, at this time, we have not received any additional requests. Um, so uh, the ones that we had received were taken care of and are present in the assessment role. So they all went through as uh, open book requests. So uh, this year we're pretty much uh, clear with what we have on the roll. Thank you. Uh, consideration by the board of uh, waivers. Uh, first question I have is the one that you sent us this morning, Chris, uh, that I'm needs so, a waiver? Mr. Chair, I'm so sorry to inter interject. Um, because the agenda item technically says consideration with possible action, I would recommend that you t um, entertain a motion to receive and place on file for the ones that there aren't, there isn't anything, um, any action to take. I'm sorry. So, so for the one that we just uh, that we just passed about the um, uh, additional requests received by the city assessor, I would recommend that you do um, one we'll of the other board. That. Okay. Yep. Do a motion to uh, receive and place on file. Okay. I make. Uh, I would accept. Um, I would accept a motion uh, to um, accept those items on file. So move. Second. Second. Uh, call the roll. Thomas Azier. Yes. Richard Loren. Yes. Steve Corkin. Yes. And that passes. Okay, the next thing then uh, would be uh, consideration of possible action on request of waivers for the Board of Review. Uh, my first issue then would be uh, the thing that we received this morning. Uh, does that, that needs a waiver? That uh, information, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Chris, you can answer first. I was just gonna say that information goes with that property, that, um, that was additional information. 445 Madison. Yes, 445 Madison. It was just additional information that he um, wanted to present to the board. Okay. Was that... Uh... All right. Did we receive, um, so that's additional, so that one's a timely. Did we receive uh, all all the ones that we'd received? Did we also receive requests for telephone uh, testimony? Yes, I have that for each one. Each one, okay, great. So we have nothing to uh, uh, consider for uh, waivers. Yes, you do. Which one? Actually, I'm asking for waivers for all the properties go on to circuit court. Oh, you're asking that we just send them all on then, right? Yes, I am. These are all commercial properties and uh, because of the lack of cooperation from the property owner or the tax reps, I'm asking that these all be waived onto uh, circuit court to allow my staff time to uh, okay. look like we've done in the past. I would recommend that you take each of them individually and make sure to consult the policy that we have for waiving, to, waiving the Board of Review hearings and go through the factors listed on there. Yes, I was planning on that, so. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, was that Russ that was speaking just before? Yes, Rick, that was me, sorry. Okay, I, I don't have the visual and it's not easy yeah, doing this. Yeah, I know, I didn't put the visual on because it's bad enough well, to see once a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it, it's just that technologically I'm 
I'm buried somewhere in the mid 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Okay, so. Um, Lindsay, can, excuse me. Um, yes. Lindsay, there was someone that had their hand raised. Who is taking care of the hand raising? It's gone now, but I just wanted to um, make sure that we were all on the same page. Um, I, I can I can direct the chair's attention to the hand raising. Okay. Um, can you hear me? This is Chad Zaznanski. That's the one that I'm sorry. Yep, that's the one that had his hand raised. Hi, I, I just wanted to. I represent Aurora, and I, I I heard Russ say that he wanted to waive these into board, and I just wanted to mention that we we would think we would be acceptable to that, and we were going to ask to be waived to waive the board also. This is a commercial property for Aurora. So thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Are we going to do them individually? Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with that one, and then I'll go through and see if the representatives are. Uh, discussing and if they have any objections and then we'll vote on it. So the first one we'll take will be Aurora and um, one both parties uh, have agreed to uh, uh, to waive into uh, circuit court. Uh, do I hear any other objections to that before we vote? Okay, then I would call uh, to a vote on, uh, or a motion to waive this. Um, maybe we should put, uh, why don't we put, uh, Chris, you wanna put the parcel number on the record uh, before we vote on it so we have the official parcel number? Sure, I'll, I'll just state the parcel number we are talking about is 21-161-2. Two, the address is 2845 Greenbrier Road. Okay, fine. Um, we'll vote on, or I accept a motion to waive this property to circuit court. I would, I would make that motion uh, based on the fact of the, the complexity of this uh, commercial property and the request of, of the assessor uh, and given the factors of how difficult these procedures are now under the problems that COVID has caused. And I would so move that we uh, be circuit court. Do, we do I have a second? Second that. Uh, call the roll, would the clerk call the roll please? Thomas Azure. Yes. Richard Loren? Yes. Steve Corkin? Yes. Okay, uh, next, let's take the uh, property at 445 South Madison Street, Green Bay. Um, would the clerk read the um, parcel number of that property? Sure. I just want to clarify something with Lindsay. Since um, the assessor's office isn't, you know, um, really saying anything right now, they don't have to be sworn in yet, correct? I just want to correct. Clarify. That's okay. correct. Okay. All right. So you said 445 Madison Street? Yes. Parcel number is 13 171. Thank you. Do we have a representative uh, for the? Mr. Kohlenberg is raising his hand. Um, are you representing that part, that parcel? Uh, yeah, I am. Four four five Madison. Yes. Yes. Do you have any objection to uh, waiving uh, this parcel directly to Circuit Court? Yeah, I do. I'd like to. Uh, uh, have a hearing on that, or we can waive it right to Department of Revenue. Can we go to DOR? That's that's not an option under the waiving. Okay, so I would like my hearing on that one. Okay. 
So you would like a hearing today is what you're saying then? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, now, uh, the other has requested that this, this to circuit court. The objector uh, would like a hearing today. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, refer this case to circuit court. May I comment? Yes, you may. Thank you. Thank you. Why I would like to have the hearing and why going to circuit court would strip my client of his, um, of his options to be represented. The value of the property, uh, just a moment, I'm trying to bring it up. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a value for this property, clerk? I don't have it right in front of me. The um, assessment as it is right now, land is 131,300. Improvements are 788,300 for total property at 919,600. Okay, thank you. So at $919,000, it falls under the $1 million threshold to be heard by the Department of Revenue. Because this is such a small property, it is very difficult to have representation in circuit court. And that's because the cost of appearing at circuit court is excessive. The cost of the attorneys is, it's just very, very high. What I would like to suggest is the following. Please hear my case. It will take five minutes. I understand if the board sides in my favor, that's great. If they don't, they would like to appeal to the Department of Revenue. By waiving it directly to circuit court, I cannot be heard before this board and the cost is prohibitive to be heard in circuit court. All I'm asking is for my client's case to be heard. He can be heard if the board gives me five minutes. If you decide against it, I will present it to the Department of Revenue. Without that leeway, five minutes of your time, my client has no choice but to but to drop the appeal and never really be her minutes is all I'm asking. Uh, can I have that five minute time period? Mr. Thank Chairman, you. if I may speak. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Kohlenberg uh, discusses his, his lack of having rights. Perhaps he should explain why he waited till the week of border review this to our attention so and we've explained to him all along that if he has a case or if he has somebody that wants to have a property reviewed once the values are set in the year which is last may that anytime during the year he can approach my office to discuss these values he waits until the week of or the week before board review to drop these in my office and not allow us time to prepare our cases because we're working on other cases so for him to cry that he does not have his rights or due process is a farce. So uh, this is what he's trying to do is push us into a corner, but I'm sorry. Uh, he knows what the rules are. He's done this long enough. It's just a game. So I'll tell you what, if he really is serious about doing value and discussing and, and serving his property owner the way he should be, he would have approached my office a month ago, two months ago, to discuss this case, not the week before or the week of border review like he has in all three cases that he's presenting today. And that's why I'm asking these to be waived to circuit court because perhaps then he will understand that we're serious about our values and uh, he will maybe do something in a more timely fashion. That's all I have. Uh, Rod? Excuse me, I, I have a question for Russ. Uh, Russ, are, are you saying that you haven't had enough time to properly prepare your case in this matter? I'm saying that you have not given us 
the proper notice and we have asked you for information over the past several months on this property. You have not given us anything. And you rushed waited the last minute to, don't interrupt me, please. They asked you not to talk over so they can hear properly. So That's don't Rick interrupt. That's asking a question. Uh, I'm sorry, Rick. Yeah, what, it was Rick that asked the question, not, not, not the objector. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I just asked if, if, it, if, the position that you haven't had a proper amount of time to prepare for this case because of no. the late lateness. No, he never gives us enough time. He always waits to the last minute to, to drop these on us. And then he, we ask for information. He never gives us the information until, well, like that information you guys do, we got it at the same time. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff they, they do. So, I mean, uh, he will, on property and then he will talk to my appraiser and say well I've got a couple more I want to talk to you about and that was you know like on Monday so uh, I don't feel sorry for him that he thinks his client doesn't have their rights well he's the one that's kind of uh, doing that to his own client and perhaps his client should be made aware of that that if he, he was actually serious about representing his client he, he would us a month ago or two months ago or whatever I mean our values like I said for 2020 uh, or 2019, as soon as the 2019 values are set, you can talk to us at any time, you know, from May of last year all the way up until now. This value on this property hasn't changed since last year. So the, the fact of the matter is that he's had a year to talk to us about it and waited till the last week to talk to us. So that, to me, shows that he only wants five minutes. Well, it's not five minutes. You know, five minutes just to go through the income expense stuff he, he just dropped on us on this property because it's I looked at it in, in the last five minutes in a cursory look of it it's it's bogus so just to verify the information that he has is going to take longer than five minutes so you know that's the whole problem is that we don't have time to verify the information that he's given us and in order to do that we need more time to give us the time to do that and uh, you know to wave it on to circuit court is the best thing we can do because then if he actually is serious about it he can talk to us between now and circuit court and give us the information we can still do a clerk's correction or if there's a legitimate reason for doing that but you know that's up to him I guess the the one one thing I like to comment before we vote is that if uh, with the law and and did file on a timely basis, um, I don't believe that we we can accept the argument that there wasn't enough time to uh, for the assessor's office to respond. Um, you know, he complied with the law if he filed properly. Um, I think I'm just saying that we could still probably should hear the case uh, and vote on it. Uh, and, you know, depending upon the vote, uh, you still have the possibilities of working something out uh, after that. That's- No, that's we really can't. If, 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 you, if you vote, to reduce it, then that's over with. We can't go the other way with it, Tom. Well, I know, but we, we don't know what, how we're going to vote until we hear the evidence. Well, I'm, I'm saying that because of the lateness of him giving us, it's not that he, he didn't file in a private manner. That's fine. But he, you can file and give your intent to file 48 hours, but giving us the information on the property, you don't have to give us that in which he didn't. So because you don't have the information until the last minute, we have no way to prepare a case until the last minute. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Just because we comply with the law doesn't mean you comply with the letter of the law, but the intent of the law is to have the information available so that you can make a case. We don't have the information and the time to go through the information and verify the information in order for us to prepare a decent case. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Mr. Kohlenberg, you had your hand up. Yes, sir. I'd like to respond. May I? Sure. Thank you. I'd like to bring some clarity to the uh, comments that the assessor made. 
I have three cases before the board today. The first case was presented in its entirety uh, over two months ago. For two months, my assistant and I have reached out to the assessor's office asking two questions. When is the open book and board of review? And the other question was, when can I discuss the other case, which is the shop go? That was submitted two months ago. Each time I required, I'm sorry, each time I requested feedback, the answer was open book and board of review has not been established yet. And I understand that. And the other was we're swamped, we're still working on it. Now, when I have three cases and I have one that was put in two months prior, my plan all along was get the first one done and then present the next two. <laughs> what happened was the I believe is about a week and open book is when you are scheduled to speak to the assessor. It turns out that that particular day open book Utah and I contacted the assessor and uh, I spoke with him and he said we can discuss the other two cases on Monday and as far as the first case the one that I presented two months ago he said, we're not moving on that. We'll discuss the other two cases Monday. This is shortly after the open book. Monday comes and at the end of the day, he says, I'm busy, we'll discuss it Tuesday. Tuesday comes, no response. Yesterday, he said, we're not gonna reduce anything on any property. So when the assessor said that I wait to the last minute, there was waiting to the last minute, but it was on the assessor's side. They had my appraisal two months ago. I wanted to discuss all three properties, one right after. We didn't get a final decision from the assessor until yesterday on the remaining two properties. All I'm asking is for my day in court. I promise to this board, I will make a five minute presentation. All I wanna do is have my case heard so I can take it to the Department of Revenue that's it. It's a, it's a really simple decision. The assessor has not presented accurate information. You're, you're talking like I'm the assessor. Okay, you talk to the appraiser. Has it ever talked to you about this case? So let's, let's be clear on that. You talk okay. to Steve Shepard. Okay. okay. About this at all, not the assessor. Kind of set up, Russ. All I know is that when well, I call the, one, one, I'm trying one to talk. Of, Russ, I'm trying to talk. You're in front when of I me. call the assessor's office and they give me the appraiser, I figure that I'm speaking with one of the people that works for you. Right. There's one assessor, as you well know, and then there's appraisers. As Steve Shepro, which works for me, and you know his name, so don't act like you don't know who you're talking to. I do know his name and I know your name. There are different rules for different cities. Anyway, if you want to get into an argument about how to educate I, I, the That's the thing. My point Please, is that us, even just, we, we can't even, just let me finish. Even this conversation about who you talk to, when you talk to, is going into more than a five minute discussion. So my point is that this isn't going to be a five minute hearing it cannot be a five minute hearing that's why i'm saying this needs to be waived into court because it's not financially feasible for you is not our problem it the case is going to be a long case because of the information that needs to be discussed and the questions that need to be asked of the appraiser because we don't believe the information that he's presented so that's going to take at least several hours of discussion, not a five minute hearing. Maybe five minutes on your part because there isn't much display, but it's gonna be several hours on our part. So that's why I'm asking it to be gone through and because of the way the nature of this hearing and because of the nature of the way the COVID is going, people are separated. 
very difficult for uh, information to be disseminated this way. So when a circuit court is in one place and they can hear the information, and that's what I want is the uh, person that's given out the information to be under oath in a circuit court so that we can have this taken care of and have my team get a little more time to go through the information as they see fit. That's all I'm asking. I don't think that's unreasonable. So that's why I'm asking for the waiver from the board. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to right here. Um, we've been back and forth and, and I know both sides uh, of the issue and I don't think we need to, really listen anymore um so i would I, i'm i guess i would uh, also restate my point that i made before which is um that the uh, objector did file within appropriate time um and leave it at that and now i'd entertain a motion uh to waive this case into circuit court I would move to waive it to circuit court. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Would the clerk call the roll? Miss Azier? No. Richard Loren? Yes. Steve Corkin? No. That was no, correct? Correct. So that does not pass. Okay, now we will hear this case. Um, would the clerk please read the uh, parcel number entered? I just Chairman. want to make sure. Wait, yep, Lindsay, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, you're for the waivers, so I would recommend that you go through the remainder of the waivers, and then there is an agenda item for the objections, and you get to, uh, when you get to that agenda item, um, then you can hear the hearing for that item, that property. Yep, sounds good. Thank you. Um, Let's take uh, the next next property. Um, let's take uh, the Shopco property. Would the clerk um, read that uh, parcel number on the record? So you want the twenty four thirty East Mason Street, correct? Yes. Okay. And that parcel number is two one dash one two six dash one one. Okay, um, and the the assessor has recommended that we waive this into uh, circuit court. Uh, Mr. Kohlenberg, do you have any objections to that? I do. Yes, sir. May, okay. I, may I respond? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The um, assessor, the assessor had um, received. Well, I'm not sure who it went to. It's either the assessor or the appraiser. Had received the appraisal that was conducted by the property owner two months ago. They had plenty of time to review the property, and I would like to have the property presented this morning to the board. Uh, I online the appraiser uh, he only has a short period of time he has a deposition at 10 o'clock uh, and so with the with the uh, board's permission I'd like to have this property heard first of my three properties the assessor uh, objection well obviously like I said before this is a complicated property and I have, and my staff has plenty of questions regarding this. So um, it's already 9.30 and if he has to leave at 10, that doesn't give us enough time to question the witness. So 
uh, I would suggest that we waive this in the circuit court where we all have plenty of time to discuss this. Personally, this looks like it's, it's a more complicated, involved case than the one before. Um, and I guess um, I would agree with uh, the assessor on this one. Any other discussion by uh, the uh, board review members? Yes, Tom. Go ahead. Uh, I, I agree with that. I, I think, especially in looking at our criteria, the benefits or detriments of having a record for court review and the and see the avoidance of unruly length, lengthy, burdensome appeals. I, I think given the circumstances here and we're all operating under circumstances that are unusual to say the least, uh, that I don't think we can make a record that may have to be reviewed by the court. And uh, I would, I would agree with you, Tom, I, this was something that uh, should be waived to the circuit court. Okay. Steve, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with the lines with, with what's being said. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, waive this court case, this parcel into circuit court. I would move that. Do we have a second? Second's fine. Uh, would the uh, clerk call the roll? Thomas Azure? Yes. Richard Lorenz? Yes. Steve Corkin? Yes. And that passes. Um, I don't. Um, oh, here's the other one. Okay. Um, next property would be, uh, oh, this is the 445 May. I don't have any more, um, anything else for Mr. Kohlenberg. Is there another property? The only other property I, I have copies of uh, is uh, Cottonwood Drive, 2155 Cottonwood Drive. Um, it's 1203 South Military Avenue. The um, Shopko one was sent on a whole separate email because that was a large email. All the others were on the same email. Okay, so, so it's the uh, military Shopko. No, nope, it's, um, this is... 1203 Military Drive. 1203 South Military Avenue, parcel is 6 199 5. What is that property? That, that is, is. I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it's a small shopping center. Okay. And uh, I assume you want to have that heard now? Correct. Mr. Pullenberg? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the assessor has an objection. Yes, once again, this is a property that, as he even said, that uh, he waited until the other one was discussed and gave us information this week. And supposedly there's contamination on this property. Uh, we have not been able to determine that uh, because we have to discuss that with the, uh, the DNR. So uh, we're unable to get that information, so we're, we can't verify. So that's, that's one of the problems we're running into. So I would suggest we waive that on the circuit court until we're able to verify information that he dropped off the last minute. Okay, thank you. Along with all the income and expense information that he dropped off also. Okay. Uh, do we have any other discussions by the, yes, Mr. Kohlenberg? Yes, um, if you could just clarify for me, what was the open book date? That was May 27th, 2020. May 27th. Okay, so, you know, they talk about the last minute, but it wasn't. So here it is, uh, between May 27th and June 1st, I'm sorry, June 4th, it's, uh, 
seven days, eight days, with a weekend in the middle. So you have a very small amount of time. The assessor said that they don't have time to verify the information, to check into the financials, to contact the DNR. If the time frame between the open book and the board of review is short, that is beyond my control. The best way to address it is to have a longer time frame. And I understand that they want to reach out and verify the information. However, as you stated earlier, I did comply. I did. I was in Utah on the day that the open book was. However, I was in contact with the assessor, I'm sorry, the appraiser, who indicated that he would speak with me about the property on Monday, he didn't. Tuesday, he didn't. And Wednesday, he left a voicemail saying, we're not gonna reduce anything. And so I understand the, con the constraints, however, they were having an open book and a board of review a week apart is what causes these problems. It doesn't help them. I'd like to just be heard. And I'd also like to go back to the idea of a five minute presentation. I can't tell you how long the assessor will present their case. My case will take no more than five minutes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, back to my, my point, Tom, if I may. Sure. Um, Mr. Kohlenberg is, is stating that he has a short time frame between open book and board review. And as I stated before, and maybe I re reiterate this, is that the property value on this one hasn't changed from last year to this. So he has had from May of last year to May of this year to discuss this property. He's had a year, not a week, one year to discuss this property. So for him to say that he hasn't had enough time to talk to us about this is disingenuous. So um, he can talk all along that he's he was out in Utah or wherever he was, but he's had a year to talk to us about this property and he chose to wait until this time frame in order to do this artificially uh, short time frame so that he can complain about it. So uh, we comply with the law too. I mean, uh, but that doesn't negate the fact that he waited until the last minute in order to talk to us. And you know as well as I do that our role is online. Our door is always open and our appraisers are always willing to talk to people as long as they're willing to talk to us. And uh, we've done that from day one and we'll continue to do that. But Mr. Kohlenberg, continually waits to the last minute, the last week or whatever, to discuss this stuff and send us the information. He could have sent all the information on all three properties at the same time, but he waited. He sent one and was gonna let that go until uh, we discuss that. Then he's gonna send another one and then talk about that, and then send another one. He could have sent all three at the same Whether or not we change the values on that uh, is, not really germane to the conversation. But what's germane to the conversation is that he waited until the last minute to give us the information. Um, he had, like I said, a year to give us the information. He didn't. So uh, we don't have we didn't have the time to review it and that's why I wasn't able to talk to him because he couldn't verify with the DNR whether this was a contaminated property or not. Um, so it's it's kind of difficult to talk about it if you don't have the information to talk uh, legitimately. So uh, I would strongly suggest that we move this on to uh, a circuit court and uh, we'll, we'll have time to verify the information, the rents, the income, and so on, and the expenses, and, and do it justice to this, this case. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the issues I have with this, this, this property is the uh, whether or not it's contaminated because that would uh, affect the value of the property and uh, without proper verification uh, I would think that it would be very difficult not only for the assessor to value this property but for this uh, board of review to even decide after hearing the case whether or not uh, the assessment of the property is, uh, is, is adequate and correct. Uh, so I guess I would be in favor of waving this one on too. Are there any other discussions by uh, members of the board?
be hearing none, I would entertain a motion to waive this case into circuit court. I would so move. Do we have a second? I can second that. Uh, would uh, the clerk call the roll? I'm a seizure. Yes. Richard Loren. Yes. Steve Corkin. Yes. That passes. Okay. Uh, is that the last case for Mr. Uh, Kohlenberg? Yes, okay. we did. The, well, the one is coming back. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We got the one. Well, okay. Then the last one, it looks like that I have uh, uh, is the 2155 Cottonwood Drive. Or no, I'm sorry. It would be uh, 1614 Shano Avenue, right? We do have another one after that, but yes. Somehow I'm missing, oh, maybe this is, oh, I see it, I got I got both of them here, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so 1614 Shano Avenue, Green Bay, uh, do we uh, have the agent present for that property? Yes, sir, I'm present. My name's Abraham Tia, I'm the agent. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to clarify that's parcel 6-235-A-1. Thank you. Um, Mr. Is it T? T, I like uh, T. Do you have any to waiving this property and this parcel into circuit court? I, I object. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why, okay, please. Uh, this, Why do you object to uh, having this waived? <laughs> Okay. Uh, subject is a hotel. The revenue dropped by 16%. We work with the uh, appraiser of the assessor's office. The assessor, the appraiser offered to reduce by 8%, but we have a 16% revenue drop. And therefore, uh, because the, the value um, amount, the, the subject was uh, uh, the, the indifference in the value between us and the appraiser is uh, just only around about 100000 so it's very cost prohibitive to go to the, the circuit court for this amount of value in difference. But it's a pretty straightforward case of a straight revenue drop and the valuation did not drop accordingly. And this is the reason why I'm asking you to consider that we be heard today in front of your board. Uh, the assessor, objections to that? <coughs> yes, and, and I guess they're uh, from out of state and uh, I've explained to their agent, which is a different agent now, that uh, the uh, state of Wisconsin doesn't recognize business value. Um, they're talking about revenue and we don't value that. We're valuing the uh, property itself. So uh, let me talk. You know, no, no, you, you have to let me talk. We're, we're not valuing uh, Blue Sky. We're not valuing the, the, the property uh, as uh, the flag of the property. We're not valuing it as a Super 8. We're, we're valuing it as the bricks and mortar. So um, Wisconsin is one of the states that does not recognize, and I saw the information sent was part of Georgia law, which does not apply here. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, but we don't uh, follow that uh, ideology in Wisconsin. So, and I explained that. And if, if you look at the information that was provided, our value and your value coincide other than that, when you take out that uh, value of the business. So uh, there, there is no disagreement here. It's just that you guys value property differently down there than we do. So um, that's that's where I disagree, and you, I guess you have to go to court to to come up with the uh, the, the agreement. I mean, that's the that's the main issue. Is that, and I don't think the the board here has the uh, the background in order to make that determination. It's it's not a really a valuation issue. It's it's more of an issue of uh, the law. So the law states in Wisconsin that we don't, va we don't do business value. 
So that's one for the courts to decide. And they have decided already that we don't value business. You want us to value business based on, you know, your, uh, the ups and downs of your, your revenue stream. And we don't do that. It's like, you know, telling how many cheeseburgers that McDonald's has and sell either. So that that's not something we do. And I, I don't ask the board to make that determination. So that's, my office is 10206. Go ahead, Mr. Davis. Yes, sir. Thank no, you. I'm, back. I'm not. 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 I'm so hotels uh, valuation, very straightforward, is uh, uh, strictly based on revenue. It's traded, bought and sold based on revenue. And uh, so this is our, our uh, intention today is to just for you to consider whether or not this hotel yields a re further reduction uh, for the additional 8% revenue drop that the assessor did not consider. Everything else aside, we're not going to talk about, we're not going to consider. That's the main point. That's it. Okay. Do we have any discussion on this property or parcel? Uh, I got the deal uh, filed, uh, so hopefully we'll get a decision later on this year. Okay. Is there any other property in Wisconsin that would keep in mind? All right, that's it. Nobody has any discussion? Uh, I'll have, uh, before we go, uh, <clears throat> Russ, I have a question for you. What, um, um, was, was the, or I, I guess I could, uh, well, that's more for the, we're still on the objection side. Uh, was, was the drop in revenue stream should have been last year, right? That was considered for the readjustment of the appraisal. We we looked at the income stream and we made an adjustment. The the value of the property was reduced for 2020. We took that into consideration. What they're asking for was an additional consideration for business value, and we didn't go for that. Um, generally, what we look at in any type of properties that are income producing properties is we don't look at individual years. We uh, smooth them out over a three-year period so that it doesn't just take one year into consideration because uh, it isn't fair to all the other properties. It's, it's, it's more of a non-uniform thing. That's kind of like, you know, if you sell a pro prop and we adjust that property to that sale price, we, we don't do that either. It's, it's non-uniform. So we take a three-year look at income expenses in order to smooth it out and make it fair for all the properties in the area. And that was done in this case. And that's why they got a reduction, but it's not to exact amount that they want. So uh, I guess we can do so much, but we're not going to uh, follow exactly what they're doing because that would be unfair to the other properties. They're already the lowest valued uh, hotel in town on a per room basis. And we're not going to go below that. Okay. Uh, any discussion by board members before we vote? Okay, I would entertain a vote uh, or a motion to waive this property to circuit court. Anybody? Uh, I guess I, the one question that I have, or it, it seems to me that this may be a question of law that the circuit court would have to decide. I'd like to hear what the, if the city attorney is listening, what, what she would have to say about that.
Sorry, I had trouble unmuting myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have been just doing some um, surface level research as we've been discussing, but um, whether business value can be considered would be a question of law, um, not a question of fact. So. Well, g given that. I <laughs> I'm trying to think it through to the end of that sentence. Go ahead. I say, given that, I, I would move the, uh, to waive this to circuit court because I think uh, a question of law is beyond our, uh, beyond our review. I'm not arguing is for the question of law today. I'm not doing that. I'm arguing valuation. No, your 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 objection form is clearly states, and everything you supporting documentation clearly states that you're looking at business value. So you can say that, but that's not what the objection form and supporting documentation says. Yeah, it does say on that it's uh, business intangible value. Yep. Which again would be. You know, I agree with Rick, which appears that it would be a uh, issue of law rather than fact. <laughs> so I guess I go back and say I'd entertain a motion to waive this case I to circuit court. I would so move. Okay, do we have a second? I will second that motion. Okay, would the clerk call the roll? Uh, Ms. Hazier? Yes. Richard Lorenz? Yes. Steve Corkin? Yes. That passes. Okay. Is, now, is that the end of the cases to be um, discussed on waiver into circuit court? No, we still have um, 850 Kepler to, Drive uh, Unit 2. Get the, uh, and that's our. Oh, we have. Uh, and that parcel is 21-7900. Which property is that? Um, that is... Um, okay, so it's only, it's only set up for... That's the Meadows that's attached to the hotel there off of um, East Mason and 43. It's a conference center. Oh, okay. Uh, is the representative of that property present? Yes, I am. It's Bill Ardern. Okay. Do you uh, object to having that parcel waived to circuit court? Um, I Yes, I do. Um, I approached the assessor in April uh, requesting a review of the assessment because it's been on the market for 21 months at half the assessed value and then um, provided additional information and uh, uh, I guess I, I, uh, it's a real, I know you've heard this before in terms of a straightforward case in terms of the property being on the market for 21 months at a price at half the assessed value. And, and we got one offer that is even less than the asking price. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. I don't see the need. Uh, it's not overly complex to go to circuit court. Okay, thank you. Thanks, please. Um, I guess it gets into uh, a uniformity issue again where we have reduced the property down to where uh, there isn't a whole lot left to reduce. We're at basically land value only. Reduced land, we reduced improvement. And uh, I guess it's a question of whether or not there's uh, any type of activity in that property. It's, it's uh, I, I think... And I guess I don't know if the uh, the property owner is available, and that's where the questioning would be because the property owner is the one that would have to answer the questions, not the agent. Was well, there any uh, activity going on at, at uh, the business? Seems like there's nothing going on there now, as far as any attempts to rent it out and and so on. But um, I guess I'll leave that up to the board. I would just soon push that off. I know there's been discussion, but like I said, we've made reductions on the property, but for uniformity sake, we can't go down below what other surrounding properties are. I mean, it, it wouldn't make any sense, but it comes back to where 
the uh, the property as improved is probably worth less than vacant. So, um, and we're not going to reduce the land value down below uh, where it is currently. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, uh, part of my case is is comes to the land value. The fact that um, the land value, I guess, was set by a, a contract assessment firm when they did a reassessment. At least Steve kind of gave me the background, and um, we believe that the land value is incorrect. Um, so uh, this idea of not being able to hear the case because the land value is at eight dollars a square foot or whatever to me is not a basis to go to circuit court i understand when cases are complex and it you know time consuming it makes it a circuit court but you know this like i said is, is pretty straightforward in terms of the property being on the market and and uh, vacant available it's being marketed by a commercial real estate brokerage firm okay you are aware bill that you are aware that the land value was reduced right uh, yeah, it's not eight dollars a square foot. It, right, it's five dollars uh, a square foot. Five, excuse, excuse me, you're correct. Five fifty. Sorry. So it, it the value wasn't set by the the firm. The outside firm was set by one of my appraisers in house. It wasn't a contract firm. It was one of my appraisers. It was Steve that set the value. So it wasn't. It's it's in line with all the other values up and down the street. So it's it's not out of line. And the fact of the matter that it's it's for sale doesn't really, I mean, you and I both know that you can ask whatever you want for a property, and if it's a distressed property, it, it may sit for quite a while. So, I mean, if you, I, I guess I'm not making an excuse that it's because it's a land value, that's why we, we can't hear the case. That's not, not my argument. Well, this this may be one that, that we could hear. I, I guess I would like to hear the, the evidence from the objector. Um, do we have any other discussion uh, from the board members before we vote? Okay, I guess I would entertain a motion to waive this case into circuit court as recommended by the assessor. Hearing no motion, uh, would the clerk, I guess without a motion, then we'll proceed with the hearing. Uh, I would actually uh, request that uh, we have a uh, recess for uh, one hour in order for my people to get their paperwork together because they're scattered throughout the building. So I just want them to be able to get their stuff together because they, they weren't aware of what properties were going to be having hearings okay Give well them time uh we'll we'll put this one off for now but because uh, we can go back and hear the uh uh here 445 south madison street that one's still uh for us to discuss so uh, right i'm asking for a, 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 a recess for one hour for for both for both to get back for both yeah to get, come back in one hour to uh, to start the hearings Okay, do, um, we can do that. Can the other board members uh, be available or an hour from now? Yes, the only question I would have is uh, if we hang up, can we then redial and get back into the meeting? You yes, know, you can. I guess my, yes, you I, can. I can't, okay. Yep. <clears throat> okay then why don't we uh steve are you able to come back yes i should be able to resume sorry mr chairman okay let's then why don't we have uh we'll adjourn uh until let's say do you need a full hour rest or can we come back a little bit earlier well let's say how about quarter to 11 would that be okay That'd be good. Let's do that. Okay, we'll adjourn until uh, 1045. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. <laughs>
Berg is that you will make your presentation, uh, your oral arguments, and any uh, written documentation that you would like to present. Board members have the opportunity to question you. The assessor then will question you, and then uh, we would uh, vote on it. Uh, now that the clerk swear in Mr. Kohlenberg and the assessor that's going to be testifying. Sure. Mr. Kohlenberg, would you please state your full name uh, for the record and then we'll have the clerk swear you in. My name is Gary Kohlenberg. Hi, and your address, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, would you swear him in, Chris? Yep. My address is 345 River Bluff Circle, Oconomowoc 53066. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear that the testimony which you shall give on the matter now on hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. Uh, would the assessor... Which one of the assessors will be testifying? It'll be Steve. Okay, Steve, do you want to be sworn in, please? State your full name for the record. This is Steve. I'm here. Uh, state your full name for the record. My name is Stephen Shepro, uh, a commercial appraiser for the city assessor's office here in Green Bay. Address here is 100 North Jefferson Street. Green Bay. Okay, Chris, would you swear him in? Sir, um, can you, can I see you, Steve? Or don't you have that capability? No, no we don't. I will stand and hold my hand up. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony which you shall give on the matter now on hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Thank you. With the assessor's office for the record, Please read the uh, parcel number of this property and your valuation of the land and uh, um, property of the buildings. Was that referred to me? Yes, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the property we're looking at is parcel number 13-171. It's located at 445 South Madison Street, Green Bay. It was uh, the land value on this property is one hundred thousand three hundred improvements seven hundred eighty eight thousand three hundred so a total value of nine hundred nineteen thousand six hundred. Thank you, Mr. Kohlenberg. Would you like to make your present? Oh, thank you. So I'm setting my stopwatch <laughs> to five minutes. I promise I won't test. It's in five minutes. Here we go. So um, my name is Gary Kohlenberg, and the first thing I'd like to do is address Steve. Steve, um, I'm sincerely sorry, and there was no disrespect meant. Uh, different municipalities have different policies regarding assessors and appraisers, and I felt that when I was speaking to you, I was speaking with the assessor. I know Russ is the chief assessor, I thought that you were also an assessor. I now recognize that you're an appraiser that works for the assessor. So I apologize for any misunderstanding. It was an oversight on my part. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, briefly about me, I am a certified assessor number two, certified by the state of Wisconsin Department of Revenue. Uh, I have been a commercial real estate broker for over 30 years. I'm a certified public, uh, certified public accountant. Uh, my education, I have a bachelor's in business administration from, in finance from the University of Wisconsin. I have a master's in accounting. I have a master's in international business. 
And I know what it's like to sit on the other side of the table uh, as the board, because I was also the former mayor of the city of Oconomowoc. Uh, regarding the property at hand, uh, if the chairman can confirm that you are in receipt of the document called 445 Madison Analysis. It is an Excel spreadsheet, and it says uh, direct capitalization at the top. So we have specific subject. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Chairman, do you have the document? Yes, I have it. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, the assessed value should be seven hundred fifty-four thousand four hundred. Uh, the assessor has it assessed at 919. The way that I calculated this is a uh, standard procedure for assessing income property. And when I say standard, I am leaning on the course that was a refresher course I took less than six months ago taught by uh, one of the uh, premier assessors from the city of Milwaukee. This is a, a standard document. This is not something I made up. It's just the way that you assess income property. So the first item is the gross rental income. And to arrive at that, you take the market rent for the property, uh, which would be $14.50, multiply it by the total square footage, 11,700 and you get 169,650 is the gross possible rent building could generate. And then you build in expense reimbursement, which is zero, miscellaneous income, zero, gross potential income on the property is 169,650. So if applied a vacancy factor of 10%, the building is currently 100% vacant. Vacancy factor of 10% would, would account for $16,965 in vacancy and collection loss. This would be if somebody uh, doesn't pay their bill or you have to go out for collection, it's another uh, $1,697. So the effective gross income, $150,989. The expenses, I took that directly from the financial statements that were also submitted to the board. It, those I took the last three years, added it together, divided by three, we get an average. I added back interest. There is no interest that was in the total expenses. I added back the, the appreciation, added back the average taxes, and the total expenses for the property on the financial statements for management was zero. So I added back zero and then I subtracted a standard 5.5% management uh, fee, which is $8,304. I deducted a reserve for replacement. Consider this an economic depreciation. Total expenses, $59,681. Net, in, net operating income, 91,307. You see, I just passed five minutes. We'll take another 30 seconds. The tax rate, that's a standard. Cap rate, it's, I picked a cap rate of eight and a half percent. I understand the assessor may have a different cap rate. The loaded cap rate is word tax rate. Add the cap rate, you get 10.9. And you get a market value of 837,313. You multiply it by the assessment rate, some novel idea. This is something that's in, the, in this manual. And uh, we get an assessment value, in my opinion, of 754,419. When we subtract the existing value, you get an overassessment of $165,181. I'd be happy to entertain any questions from the board or the assessor. Okay, does any, we'll go to the board first. Uh, does board member, any board member have a question for the objector? <coughs> the 
assessor have any questions for the objector? Not at this time. Okay, would the assessor please prov uh, provide your uh, testimony as to the valuation of this property? Okay, the property we're looking at, as we indicated, was parcel number 13171, located at 445 South Madison Street. Uh, we do go through all three approaches to value, and I think there is some similarities to what um, um, it. The other thing is, it's just, it's, it's kind of numbers that are being anticipated or uh, basically just based on what he can because the building is vacant. Uh, this property was built in 1986. It is an office building. Uh, the square footage is 11,704. Uh, land size is 19,354. Uh, our total value of 919,600, I believe. We did the cost approach, uh, and our cost approach is really difficult to do, as I think Mr. Kallenberg would agree, is because you got to determine depreciation, and that's always difficult, but we do try to take that from sales that we do have in the in the market and we try to determine that's how our program is set up our, our cost approach it was right around 1900 or 919,000 uh on the income uh, we go to market approach we do have a few sales out here uh the first one would be uh 444 south adams street this is an office building here downtown and it was built in 1980 as compared to the subject property in 1986 um, oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the the uh, assessed value on that property to show the ex, uh, being the same and try to keep it in line. Our our value is at eighty eight dollars and eighty three cents a square foot. The next one's at four fourteen South Jefferson Street, another office building built in nineteen eighty five. This one actually sold. On, uh, uh, October 13th, 2015, for 1.1 million, which is an indication of about $110 a square foot. Um, the next one we have is 701 Cherry Street. Uh, this is a office slash school property, you know, and this one also sale was 622 2015 for 2.9 million, uh, indication about $119 a square foot. The subject property that we have. Um, is 11704 and it gives us a value with land of $78 a square foot. So it's well within the range of other properties that have sold in the city, keep it in line. And as I think uh, our assessor has indicated, equity uh, between properties is one of the most important things that we can do uh, when we set values. We do look at valuation, but we also wanna make sure it's consistent throughout. Um, on the income approach, oh, I'm sorry, just give me a second here, please. Okay, if we if we um, take the information, even what uh, he requested, basically, we're, we're looking at, I know it's listed out there, I believe for $14 and some cents per square foot, fourteen fifty a square foot, it's listed right now. Um, and if you break it down, no different than Mr. Kallenberg did. I, I think his expenses are high because he's anticipating a tenant in there. Uh, we don't know at this point of if it's gonna be a triple net or gross, whatever. So we try to take what's typical in the market. And based on that, our number is actually coming up as an indicated value about 1.1 million. And I will say that looking at the other properties and the other ones we reviewed, we felt this was in line. And then we also came across as a listing on this subject property uh, was just updated on June the 2nd of 2020, 1,095,000. Um, so actually their listing is more than what we actually have in the property at this point. Um, I, I understand it's just a listing, but it also is, uh, when they come up with these listings based on income projections, so I believe their income projections justify our value. So I feel ours is a fair valuation. That's all I have. 
Do any of the board members have questions of the uh, assessor? Mr. Kohlenberg, do you have any questions of the assessor? Mr. Kohlenberg? You're muted. Sorry. You have any the questions? The sales that you mentioned, were those verified sales? Yes, they are. Okay, and you said that you came up with expenses that were higher uh, than mine based on the marketplace, not on the specific property, is that correct? That's not correct, no, it's actually less than what you had. The typical the market is 50. Yeah, 50. Ours? And like I said, you're, you're anticipating that based on what the, what it would just be a triple debt lease. Um, so that, that would be part of it. But when they determine the, the listing on this property and what they're asking for, that usually is done by a broker that comes up with an anticipated amount that the building would generate. And that's why we believe that we're not looking at this any different than what the owner is with their broker to put it on the market. So you're basing your value on a broker's opinion of value? It, it is something that we look in, absolutely. Okay. It's not our only opinion. It, it falls in with the rest of our procedure. We look at the cost, market, and income approach. Okay, so I'm, I'm a little confused because I'm asking about the income approach. So on the income yep. approach, the expenses that you're using, are those higher or lower than the expenses I am using? Correct. Oh, we're lower. The expenses are lower than what you are. Okay, and you're saying that your expenses are based on market rather than actual, correct? Well, we have to do that. The, the building is vacant. Right, I'm just asking how you're doing it. You're doing it rather than actual, correct? Correct. Okay, so by doing that, knowing that we have three years of expense history, you're ignoring actual and you're just applying and uh, a market expense rather than actual. So for example, if the property has an inefficient furnace, it doesn't matter. You're going to reduce the expenses as if he had an efficient furnace. Is that correct? No, I don't think you, you're turning that around. I, I believe that when, a, when a, the expenses are based on the lease agreement, and that will be determined if it's a uh, net net or triple net uh, lease. So the expenses will be determined based on that lease. And so if you want to get into reserves and that's all included in there, you do put aside for reserves. I understand that. But at the same time, I mean, we, we can go through this all day, but I, I, without being the property occupied, and if you want to go off of three years and this property not producing, that would be another thing, but I'm just saying, I'm going by what we have typically in the market and the information from the broker indicating that we are all on the same page except for you. Okay, uh, actually, I'm not really sure where you're going with that. I have no further questions. Okay, would you uh, do the, um Board members have any other questions of the assessor? Okay, Mr. Kohlenberg, would you like to make your final statement? Absolutely. So um, when you value a building like this, you value it based on how much money it will make for the investor. 
It's really that simple. If the building is anticipated to have a decent return, if it looks like it's going to be a problem building, it's worth less money. So everything that you saw here was based on um, standard valuation for a building. With the gross rental income, this is the amount of money that they are expecting to receive, which is $14.50 a foot. The expenses are the actual cost to, to operate the building. And the rest of the calculation is what's used to establish value. It's unusual for a real estate broker to pump up the asking price with anticipation that the offer price will be less. It is also imperative to understand how the application of the so is used in valuing the building. And by not applying the assessment ratio to the fair market value of the property, it is a violation of the um, uniformity clause. Uh, this is not my opinion. This is in the manual. I contacted the Department of Revenue. They confirmed it, and they pointed me to two sites. Uh, one is a chart in the uh, manual, and the other is the Wisconsin State Statutes, where it talks about the uh, uh, uniformity clause. So in my opinion, the property is overassessed by $165,100. Okay. Uh, any discussion by the board members before we vote? Okay, then I would entertain a motion to accept the valuation of this property as set by the assessor. I would so move, I believe, uh, that the, the, the presumption that the assessor's evaluation is correct has not been overcome by the evidence. Do we have a second? I do agree with that. So you're seconding that? Correct. I'm second. Okay, would the clerk call the roll? Call the vote. Thomas, Thomas Azier? Yes. Richard Loran? Yes. Steve Corkin? Yes. That passes. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you, members of the board. Okay, next we will uh, hear the other case on, this is 850 Kepler Drive, right? Unit two? No, we're doing 445 Madison Street. No, we just did that. Just did that one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yes. It's 850 Kepler. It's 21-7900. No, 850 Kepler Drive, uh, partial 21-7900. 20, Is that correct? Yes. Okay, would the, uh, uh, Mr. Ar is it Mr. Ardern? Ardern, correct. Ardern, uh, would you please state your full name, address, uh, for the record? Sure. Uh, Bill Ardern. My office is 10206 North Port Washington Road, uh, Mequon, Wisconsin, 53092. Okay, would you please uh, raise your right hand and uh, let the, the uh, clerk swear you in? Do you, sound, do you solemnly swear that the testimony which you shall give on the matter now on hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, who from the assessor's office will be testifying? Still that be will Steve. be It'll be Steve Chaparral. Okay. Steve, would you please uh, state your full name for the record? Yes. My name is Stephen Chaparral. And I'm one of the commercial appraisers for the city of Green Bay. Uh, the address here is 100 North Jefferson Street. 
Hey, Chris, would you swear him in, please? Sure. Is your hand raised, Steve? Yes, it is. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony which you shall give on the matter now on hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Thank you. For the record, Steve, would you please uh, state the appraised value of this property? Okay. Uh, the property in question is called the Meadows, uh, parcel number 21-7900. Okay, that 850 Kepler Drive, Green Bay. The land value is 802,600. The improvements is 630,800. The total value of 1,433,400. Okay, thank you. Um, would the objector now like to present your, you know, you'll present your evidence, then the uh, board can ask you questions, the appraiser can ask you questions, uh, and then the appraiser will uh, uh, yeah. provide their testimony and you can ask, we can ask some questions and you also, and then you have a chance to make a final argument. So go ahead with your initial presentation. Okay, I uh, sent Chris a summary that I put together. It's called summary uh, for the, 2020 Board of Review. Um, does the board, do all the board members have copies of that? Yes. Great. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm just going to walk through it. Uh, the six, six points that are on the summary. Uh, this property has been on the market for sale since September 2018. Uh, the asking price is $750,000. It has been $750,000 since January. Um, there's only been one offer to purchase on the property that has been $700,000. Uh, unfortunately, as of <laughs> April, the, uh, that offer fell apart because the, um, under the condominium documentation, uh, the connecting hotel has uh, a majority vote. Uh, the, uh, each condominium unit, this unit along with the restaurant, there's three units to the condominium, uh, has a vote and the uh, hotel um, did not want the use uh, that the purchaser had in mind, which was to have rock concerts. Uh, the hotel was concerned that the noise would be um, uh, objectionable uh, to people staying at the hotel. So that $700,000 uh, offer, uh, the only thing it was contingent upon was approval of the hotel owner and she would not approve it. So that offer fell apart. Um, that 700000 is what I put on the objection form as the uh, estimate of market value because that is the most recent uh, evidence of market value other than the $750,000 asking price. Um, right now, the owner uh, is is really uh, frustrated. The you know, building's been vacant since September 2018. Now, uh, in the context of COVID-19, she's concerned that, you know, who's going to want a special event uh, building like this for, you know, weddings and, and uh, other special events. So, you know, going forward, and I know that isn't relevant for the current assessment year, but it's something in the back of the mind of, of the owner that she's got to get this overhead down as it relates to the holding costs. Um, we believe that the land value that is excessive, uh, there's a, a summary of 16 commercial land sales in the copies of exhibits that show an average uh, commercial sale price of $2.70 a square foot, whereas the subject is being assessed at $5.50 a square foot. Um, and moving to my sixth point that we got copies of exhibits. Uh, first exhibit is the marketing brochure uh, with uh, the $750,000 asking price, uh, a copy of the accepted $700,000 offer that fell apart because of the uh, hotel, and then the summary of the commercial land sales that uh, we put together. Um, does the board have any questions? Any board member have any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Rick. No, I don't have a question. Okay. Steve? Not at this time, no. Just Sorry, no, I, I don't have any questions at this point. Okay. The, uh, the assessor, you don't have any questions either, you were saying? Correct, I, not at this time. Okay. Uh, would you like to make your presentation now? Yes. Um, as we talked about, this is considered, it's called the Meadows. It's a conference center. This is a condo unit. There, it, when this was built, it was built as three condo units. One is Country Inn and Suites, and now the restaurant in there is called Pablo's. 
and the conference center. I, I was involved with this one way back, uh, quite a few years back on this one when this all started up. And, you know, this is the only conference center that the hotel actually uses. Um, so they don't have their own. They have one basically just a meeting room now. And so I did have a conversation with the hotel regarding this because I wanted to know what's going on because it, this is quite a difference in value and try to understand what's going on here. I did talk to Mr. Adern previously on this property. I think he kind of agreed this is kind of unique because typically we don't run into problems where it's this much discrepancy between prices. So basically, so I, I did talk to them. They said they haven't, they don't even know the last time that this place has been even trying to take uh, events. And that goes back quite a ways. We did go online and found there was quite a bit of negative comments about the place. So I, I really believe this is a business side of it that really has not worked out well for this one. Uh, the, there was a sale on the property. It was a sheriff sale, a foreclosure for 500000 And the company or the people that bought it now turned around and pretty much are flipping it for seven fifty. So the, the incentive there is not a lot, but except for making two hundred or 250000 on something you just picked up. That's not unusual. People will do that. That doesn't determine the market value. Um, so I understand the sheriff sale is definitely is a rejected sale. Uh, and I would believe we would probably reject the next one because it does not fall because it would, it's an outliner basically it would be. So we do, like I said, this is a, a condo unit. So it does make it kind of a unique situation. As far as the land sales, when we went through, uh, we did reduce this down. We did take a look at our land sales in here. And the discussion that was brought up earlier uh, when this was originally valued was quite a bit before I was here, um, but it was set based on the market at that time. And we went along and looked at the land values. Now this land sales that I received, Mr. Adern, I didn't see any land adjustment. These sales go from Gray Street to, or Gray Court, I believe, to all over the city. Well, absolutely, there's no way that's gonna be valid for out here off of 40th Street. We do have sales within there, uh, and Guzzi's is one of them. And then uh, actually um, the Marcus Cinema is trying to sell some lots out yet for about 600 or $6.88 a square foot. We're running about 550 a square foot. So I, I think that the, the, nothing on Mr. Adern's side or I guess ours, it, it's just sort of underperformed so bad that it basically lost itself. It, 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 there's no market uh, for this property at this point. And uh, I think that, you know, we have to look at equity between properties. And when we look at all this, the hotel actually sold, a, uh, actually the hotel Country and Suites, which is attached to this, sold in 2017 for 5.4 million. Our assessed value is at 4.6 million. Uh, what we look at in Pablo's is the same thing. We got 1,100,000 on that. But what we look at is that when these properties sell, is there consistency between them? And everything else out there is. We got a Culver's out there, we got Mackinac's, we got another motel out there. So we try to stay consistent. That's the only thing you can do in the assessment business is try to be consistent so it's fair to every taxpayer. I feel like we did that. Now we have to deal with the improvements on the property. And that we feel is based on this use trail and uh, I would say the, the, the management or the ownership, whatever you want to say, it has not worked out. Now, if they've got better people in there, absolutely it could. Uh, and we'll just keep probably going down and down and down until somebody picks it up for 100,000, very possible. But that is not considered the market value. The market value is determined based on similar properties out there. We did look at some comparables out there. It's very difficult because this one's unique to being a condo, but we do have some and we look at the dollar per square foot that they sell for. This one here right now, we're sitting at, I believe $37 a square foot on this building, which is down there about warehouse. And it's definitely better than that. It, it is, they're very nice rooms. Um, and I, I think, uh, where it ends up, I don't think anybody knows at this point, but to change the value and go away, it really bothers 
us because basically it throws our system off. The, when the, in the land sales that I was given uh, with no adjustments in location, nothing uh, is not even an issue. So I, I do understand this is a very difficult one for the board. It is very difficult for everybody, I'm sure, for Mr. Burton and himself. But it's more about the business than it is about the property. It's just that it's bringing the value down. So that that's my uh, presentation as far as when we look through this. There's no, we can't do an income approach because it's not generating anything. And if we did a, a hypothetical, I'm not sure what that would do because we're not even sure if it would stay at conference center. But right now, that's how we got to look at it because that's right now would be the highest value at this point. And I would say that you know we usually don't try to get into management side of it. But I, I would think that, you know, there was what we saw, it was probably what brought the value of this property down. And if we did that for every bad management, uh, we would have quite a problem with equity throughout the city. So, but let that's all I you, have. Let me ask you a question. Uh, have there been improvements? Uh, did, did the people that bought it for 500000 are now selling it or have it on the market for seven fifty? did they make any improvements to the property, any renovation, remodeling, anything like that? <laughs> None that I'm aware of, and there's no permits on it at all. Okay. Did, um, um, and it has not been operating for several years, is that correct? Yeah, I, I just, we've been notified of this one. Like I said, I, I actually dealt with this property probably 15 years ago, and I actually, I think I believe I met either the owner or the manager at that point and they were leasing out space to, you know, conferences and uh, banquets and office uh, get-togethers. Uh, so that that's my last contact with them, and we have never heard from them before as far as having any indication of having problems except for knowing the listing. We did see the listing out there or when it sold for 500 but that was the, re you know, uh, foreclosure sales. Okay. Uh do any board members have questions of the assessor? Does the objector have questions of the assessor? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Uh, Steve, you had mentioned uh, comparables that you'd consider. What type of comparables did you consider? Are you talking about the building or the land or the business you're talking about? Um, I know you just, and when you were going through your explanation, you had said that you had considered some comparables and I, um, I just wanted to find out if there was uh, any other conference center or event space that was out there. I looked, I couldn't find something. That's why I wanted to find out if you had found some comparable sales out there. We didn't find anything, like I said, we did the same thing you did is look out there and look at other properties but i also thought this was quite unique because it is a condo it's not a standalone uh that would be also an adjustment that would have to be taken i i believe um uh, i i didn't know if the yeah. board wants excuse me uh i didn't know if the board wants me to uh, 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 address um this idea of the flipping or not i could give background about the current owner or if i should wait to do that well, you can, you can, uh, if you have no more questions of the assessor, uh, and you can now make your final presentation if you want to, and you can bring that up at that time. Okay. That'd be great. Um, this, the owner was a, a part and, uh, the, uh, uh, the restaurant was sold off. Uh, the conference center was sold off. And then, uh, finally the, the hotel was sold off, but, the conference center failed uh, under the previous owner, and um, the current owner um, bid at share sale to protect her interests because she was going to be held liable uh, on uh, past financing. So it was not, not motivation wasn't to flip the property; it was to preserve her investment. And, and now, you know, she's frustrated because um, of. The, the situation with the market she's been having on the market since September at 750 and that really goes to the crux of it we feel 
you know, and by having it on the market at 750, it's showing that it's being over assessed. It isn't representing market value because if if it's a management issue, you know, other caterers, other special event people would look at the facility, buy it, and operate it as you know a successful event space versus a, a, a potential lack of market demand, particularly right now for this type of use. And this one feel is really indicative of what the current market is. And it's unfortunate that the hotel um, did, didn't want the use as far as rock concert. And so that uh, buyer's not gonna come back most likely. But we believe the market is showing that the assessment is too high based on the $750,000 asking price that's been since September 2018. And then most recently, the $700,000 offer that unfortunately um, uh, didn't, didn't gel as far as completing. Uh, but uh, it just comes down to we feel the asking price is the best indication of market value at this point. Okay, I have, I have a question for you. Uh, since the, the owner, a, a partial owner of the hotel bought the building, or the, you know, this, this parcel, uh, has there ever been any consideration of combining it back into the hotel, which probably would increase the value? That would be logical, but the current owner of the hotel um, uh, only wants to pay like hundred thousand dollars for for the uh, for the oh. building, and and the own and the current owner, um, you know, obviously doesn't want to uh, sell at that low of a price. I mean, as Steve mentioned, over time, I mean, if this property stays on the market, who knows? Uh, what, uh, the um, owner, you know, has five hundred thousand dollars committed of her own money, and obviously would like to recover that. Um, and that's part of the logic in having it priced at 750. But um, uh, that's logical. It seems to me, you know, the hotel would be the logical candidate. But right now, they are not interested in, at the 750. And like I said, it was a third party that made the most recent offer at 700,000. And one more question: How long has it been uh, vacant, or you know, with with no use? Uh, there's a, I don't think there's been any special events or weddings for two years. Oh, okay. Well, alrighty. Thank you. Um, can any discussion among the board members? Would somebody like to? I, I have one question of, of the. Uh, you, you indicated that it's been two years since there's been any activity out there. Um, do you have any idea or as why that it's been two years? Well, well, the the uh, current owner is not um, in the special events uh, business. Um, she was an she is an investor in the real estate, so she has not been marketing it for weddings and special events. Uh, she listed it with Todd Devillers, a uh, uh, real estate broker. He's been marketing the real estate as a special event facility and that's in fact why i included a, a copy of his marketing brochure so you can see how he's trying to to sell it and um so far like i said there's only uh, the one seven hundred thousand dollar offer but um she um an operator of special event okay. Type of space okay thank you well and this is this is not a good time to try to <laughs> have special <laughs> events anyway, <laughs> even if you, you know, you're not going to have them. So, you know, that's an issue. Yeah. Um, that, that's all. But, you know, two years ago, we didn't have the COVID epidemic. Well, I think even, even Steve brought up the fact that, uh, uh, that it was probably management that, that caused the downturn of the, of the, property at that time um i, I guess i um i don't know it, it this is a hard one <laughs> mr chairman if i may speak sure uh probably if chris could probably swear me in before i talk who is this this is russ oh russ okay yeah you want to swear him in chris Are you there, Chris? Her, her microphone's muted, it looks like. Okay. Usually every meeting I do that once. 
<laughs> you want to swear in, Russ? Yeah, raise your right hand, Russ. It's raised. Do you soundly swear that the testimony which you shall give on the matter now on hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. I do realize that uh, that we're a little out of sync of what we're supposed to do here, but I think the the bottom line is to try to get all the information we can before we we make a vote. Uh, go ahead, Russ. Okay. Um, just a point of clarification, and I guess um, Rick was getting to the point I'm, I'm trying to make. I mean, uh, the person that's selling it has a vested interest in the property and, and just wants to get their money out of it that they've got invested into it. They're not in the business of that particular type of property, and and they're, and Mr. Ardern has admitted as such. So they're not trying to run this business as it was intended. So most businesses, in order to get the maximum potential value out of it, have to be occupied and run as such in order to uh, attract the best investor for that property. When somebody goes by a building and sees it empty and not being used for the past several years, they're not going to take a look at it and say, hey, I can make that. I want to see is somebody making an attempt to fill it up and do it. And there has been no attempt to do that in this case. So Steve's point as far as management is directly uh, goes to what the value should be. Value was good because, you know, we're taking that in consideration as the fact that uh, this hasn't been managed in the proper way. They're, they're just, they bought it to preserve their assets and they're basically dumping it to get their assets back out. So uh, the hotel is just biding their time until it comes down to the value that they want to pay for it. And the rest of the market's looking at the same thing because it's getting stale. If they were to put somebody in there or rent whatever to, or put somebody in there to actually put events in there and uh, have things going on, or if they would over the past several years, we'd be looking at a different case here. So what I would suggest is that we keep the market, the value the same for this year and take a look at it for next year in case anything happens. But as of the first of the year, I don't, I don't think it was uh, any attempt on their part to actually market the property as or do anything to, to make the property actually go as a going concern and, and be a, a valuable asset to that hotel and, and in that actual neighborhood. It was just left, left to go. Um, yes, um, I guess I question the fact that if the assessment represents a business value, that's not Wisconsin law. It's supposed to represent the fair market value of the real estate, not business. And I guess that's, that's not where... Saying. Not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if there was a going concern in there, it would attract more people that would be interested in seeing the property as it was intended to be used. I'm not, we're not valuing it as I said that before that I don't value business value, but as such, you look at a business, a vacant piece of property versus one that's being utilized as it was intended. Uh, and anybody that is looking at property knows the one that's occupied has a greater chance of being sold than one that's not. That's just common sense. Okay. All righty. Any other discussion by board members? Okay. I would then entertain a motion to uh, accept the assessor's valuation of this property uh, at um, $1,433,400. I would so move, uh, and again, I I don't believe that the evidence overcomes the presumption that the assessor's valuation is correct, and I I I don't believe the evidence shows that. So I would so move. Do we have a second? I would second that motion. It looks like uh, the property itself looks like it's starting to gain traction with lease and offer at this point on it. I think if it continues down that road. Um, there should be a better outcome coming forward. Uh, would the city clerk please call the vote? Thomas Azure? 
Yes. Richard Laurent? Yes. Steve Corkin? Yes. That passes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did we do we have any uh, late cases? Uh, any any other requests uh, for review by the board, uh, with exception to late filing? I'm gonna, if I can just um, check my the clerk's inquiry email first, please. Sure. Thank you. I just want to thank the board members for participating today. This is Russ. I truly appreciate it. And Steve, thank you for agreeing to come in and be a board member under these circumstances. It's uh, a trying mission of uh, being a board member for the board review without having to not see the the person that you're testifying or that's testifying in person. It's being in the boardroom with the uh, the members and the appellant and uh, the assessor's office is a different hearing than definitely this is. So hopefully by next year when we do this, we'll all be in the same room. I can only hope that. And I hope Rick decides that this isn't too long for him to, uh, and he bails on us because we've had too many people bail. So Rick, you'll be here next year, right? You're getting, you're trying to make, let me give you a, a commitment right now, and I don't know if I'm ready to do that. Pretty tricky. <laughs> who, did we all, who did we lose this year? Who all left this year? Yeah. How come we only have three three members? Well, Jay moved out of town. Okay. Okay. And uh, Diane um, had uh, work commitment, so she couldn't make it. Is yeah, she still on the board? Yeah, she's still on the board. Oh, okay. She's okay. still member today. Okay. How, how many members do we have on the board? Uh, four. And how many are are allowed on the board? Seven? Seven, yeah. Uh, is there any indication that other people are going to be nominated for the board by the mayor? Well, that that's our, our wish, and, and Steve is, is the first. So we're hoping to get okay. more people um along the way and luckily Steve consented and and we can have a quorum this year so right. um yeah hopefully well I, I appreciate that it was uh you know it's something I've had some experience with in the past I just you know coming on board such short notice as it is now getting my feet wet uh, is a good thing so I think it went fairly smoothly it's you know there's some things here and there to catch up on and move forward with but I think overall it worked out pretty well today and yeah we, we really appreciate forward. it I mean, the only thing you didn't get to participate in was the the donuts. So that's yeah. yeah. We'll get next year. <laughs> no, no, the no. best. Yeah, the it's best a little hard to send out electronic, <laughs> isn't it? You could send over a dozen routes over to the op my office if you want. Okay. Yeah, we'll work on. I'll have uh, I'll have my people talk to your people. Make sure you get your glaze so it gets through the system quicker. <laughs> How come? Chris disabled our attendee screen. <laughs> yeah. There she well, there is. You okay. <laughs> did, did you review sure. your incoming? I am checking one more place. Um, I checked with the clerk's office. There's nothing in the clerk's office. There's nothing in the email, but one girl did pick up mail. So I just want to double check with her, okay? Okay. Thank you. I think she cut us off because she heard the donut comment. <laughs> Are you, you uh, have a, a virtual donut? <laughs> have you been in work? Working rest no, in the I, office? I, I, no, I have not. I have my, my staff uh, uh, part time uh, switching off, but uh, due to medical reasons, I am not in the office. Oh, okay. Currently, so I'm I'm working remotely which is something that I uh, appreciate the city of Green Bay allows us to do. They've been awesome working with us. We've got a good IT department that lets or hooks us up and uh, obviously with the Zoom video and, and help, uh, we're able to do this. So it's, it's 
pretty smooth sailing. I mean, uh, we're all sitting in different places and able to do this. So it's, it's a testament to our, our staff and, and people that are doing it. So a big shout out to them. I you know, I, know. I, I, set this up. I, I downloaded the zoom thing on my cell phone, my smartphone, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't get the pictures. I got, on, I got into the, the meeting, but I, I don't know if I'm not hitting the right button or whatever. I'm, you know. I have the There's only been a few, few uh, pictures. Uh, none of us have been, been on there, so. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I mean, I actually, nothing uh, serious on your medical. No, I'm just getting old. Okay. Well, like the rest of us. I, <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in the double danger group. I'm over 65, and I had bypass surgery. So. Oh well. Oh. Well, I haven't had the bypass surgery, but I'm, but I'm overweight, so that's that's not good either. With the and I'm 76, so. No. But you're young, 76. Yeah, you know, sometimes I feel like it. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. didn't receive anything in the first two hours of the meeting so um there isn't anything else okay great uh russ do we have anything on personal property we do not and do we have anything on what is what is the, the other thing that we we have you know where you uh oh any anything that i bring forward to have any adjustments yeah made? yeah no um we actually took care of all that stuff uh, during open book. We didn't have anything come back late. So anything that we had, we had the property owner sign um, uh, waivers so they don't come to board review and they were all adjusted and they appeared in the uh, uh, assessment roll. So those were okay. taken care of. Super. Any other business to be brought before the board? Okay. No, nope, not on our hand. Okay, I would then entertain a motion to adjourn. I would second that motion or make that motion. <laughs> Steven, I'll be the one to second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much, Chris and Russ.